The iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max cameras just got a big upgrade with iOS 14.3, the Apple Pro Raw. You've got to try it out if you haven't. Hi, this is David of Tech for Baba, a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. In today's video, let's quickly go over what the new Apple Pro Raw is, how to enable it, and end with if you should use it or not. With iOS 14.3, iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max can now take photos in Apple's new RAW format called Apple Pro RAW. Without going into all the details, this Pro RAW format stores all the data the camera sensor hardware sees plus the computational photography from software so we can edit these Pro RAW photos with much greater flexibility. This feature is now turned on by default. To turn this new Pro Raw feature on, the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max need to be upgraded to the new iOS 14.3 first, of course. Once updated, it can be turned on by going to Settings, Camera, Formats, Under Photo Capture, Turn Apple Pro Raw on. After which, go to the Camera app. There will be a cross out Raw icon right next to the Live Photo icon. To take a Pro Raw photo, tap the cross out Raw icon and turn it on. That's it. Photos can now be taken the same way as before. It'll just be stored in the ProRAW format instead. With iOS 14.3, the ProRAW mode will default back to off after the camera app is closed for a few minutes. The ProRAW photo can be viewed and edited the same way too. Just open it in the Photos app. It'll say RAW on the upper left corner indicating it's a ProRAW photo. Let's compare a ProRAW photo to a regular RAW photo we've been able to take with a third-party app like Lightroom. First thing I noticed is a Pro Raw photo has more dynamic range. The brighter parts or the highlights and the darker parts or the shadows have more levels of shades to them. Here are the two photos side by side. On the left is a Pro Raw photo. On the right is the regular Raw photo from Lightroom. The Pro Raw photo is a lot more dynamic in 3D with additional computational photography data. The sky on the top right corner for example is much bluer. By the way, this better quality is most pronounced in low lights or in high light contrast scenarios, like this one with the bright light behind the object, or when there are both a bright sky and a shaded area in the same photo. The advantage of a ProRAW photo is even more obvious when I try editing it. I could push the photos or parts of the photo brighter or darker much more before the photo would fall apart or lose details, start showing artifacts or noise. For example, on this ProRAW photo, not that I do this with all the photos, but I can easily move the shadow slider all the way down to minus 100, and the shadow area still retain most of the details and shades. On this similar photo in JPEG, the dark areas start to lose details quickly and just turn completely black when I get halfway to about minus 50. Here they are side by side with the shadow slider turned down to minus 100 on both. ProRAW works on all four cameras, the three in the back and the front facing. Here's one with the 2.5 zoom lens and one with the wide angle lens. Look at how much I'm able to bring out these trees in the shadows with the slider. Works well on the front facing camera too. The Apple ProRAW format saves us the popular Adobe Digital Negative DNG file, so it can already be viewed and edited in many photo editing softwares such as Photoshop as well. In addition to typical raw data like professional cameras from Sony or Canon, Apple Pro Raw also includes Apple's software computational photography data. The iPhone actually takes multiple data with a single press of the shutter for diffusion and smart HDR high dynamic range processing. With its faster processor, it then combines the best parts of these photos to produce one with more details and shades of color and light. That's why the picture quality could be so good coming from such small sensors on these iPhones. Apple has opened up this new format to third-party developers, so I can't wait for various editing software to take full advantage of this new ProRAW format and add abilities to easily turn a brown jacket to a red one or a green one. So if ProRAW is so great, why not just turn it on and use it all the time? Good question. Well, there are a couple of major trade-offs or drawbacks with ProRAW. First is the file size. Typical iPhone JPEG or HEIC files are just 5 to 7 megabytes. ProRAW files are about 25 megabytes. That's about 4 to 5 times larger, 
so our already very limited iPhone storage will be even more limited with ProRAW. Also, ProRAW isn't supported in live photo, portrait, and panoramic modes. Having said that, whether you're willing to make these trade-offs or not, if you have the new iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max, give ProRAW a try. It's very easy to enable and edit with just the iPhone. It adds a lot more flexibility to tweak the photos afterwards, allowing me to customize the photo to my liking. I don't think it needs to be turned on all the time, but it's a great tool to have in extreme lighting conditions or when there's that one important shot you want to make sure you nail. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please smash the like button and share it with others. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the new Pro Raw format in the comments below. Do you think these improvements are worth the files taking up more precious space on your phone? If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cherish each moment.